deliberate in my emphasis. Write them. Meditate on them. Let these things become real. It will be the substance and the foundation of your faith. Do you see why the devil can allow you to fornicate and still heal the sick? Because that's mundane. The real powers in the spirit, they are beyond healing. They are men that can speak to the wind. I say, let the east wind come and fill the bodies and a great army can rise. For such powers, it's not a gift. It is to walk in the realm of righteousness. Dimensions that are hollow. Only mortals can wield them. And so the devil has no problem with you prophesying. Add fornication to it. Because he knows that with your prophecy, he will still take the city. You can have congregation. You can have a large member. But the city belongs to him. Because princes don't fight for men. They fight for territories. It's demons that fight for men. And so when princes come, they are contending for the city. And we will never have the power to take the city until we know the way of righteousness. That's why no man can stand up and banish the sons of the bondwoman. But in the days of Samuel, he says, so long as Samuel lived, he said the hand of God was perpetually against the Philistine. Samuel didn't need to pray. So long as he was breathing, no bandit can come close to Zion. Because if you try it, you will be converted. Did you not read about Saul? When he came to arrest Samuel, the moment he touched the borders of Nioth in Ramah, the Bible said he prophesied naked from night until morning because the hand of God was a defense. But check those men. The power they wielded was not an anointing. It was called righteousness. When Samuel was old, he stood before Israel. He said, let one of you accuse me. Let one man, one, I've never taken a lamb from you. I've never robbed any of you. I've never withheld anything from you. Let one man accuse me. And not one man in Israel could stand up and say something against him. And when they didn't have an accusation, he showed us the display of righteousness. And he said, this is dry season. He said, but now, let the cloud pour down. And rain began to fall in dry season. There are powers in the spirit that is superior to a gift. Those are the garments of righteousness. And until the bride of Christ grows into her stature in righteousness, we cannot say to the devil, hold your peace. When you finish your work, don't be left with a gift. Your gift will be corrupt. It will become a monument. Leave the earth with the garment of righteousness. Because even when Jesus returns on the white horse, he said those who will come with him, he said they are without spot. Because their garments have been washed in the blood. It is righteousness that gave them stature in Zion. And so when you grow from the realms of righteousness, you will come to a higher realm. That realm is called the realm of the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. When you enter the realm of the fear of the Lord, God begins to give you keys in the spirit. That means you become a custodian. What God wants to do is that he begins to hide dimensions with you and in you. So you have the power to unlock things and to close them. That was the realm Daniel was operating in, in Babylon. When they told them to eat anything they want, they said Daniel and his friends refused to be defied with the portion of the king's meat. The reason is because they feared God. They feared the Lord. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they said, we will not be careful to answer you in this matter. We fear God more than your throne. 
And the king said, make the fire seven times hotter. They were not moved. They were so bound by the fear of the Lord that they became prisoners of God. And when God was working with Daniel at the latter age of his life, he told him, seal the book. I've given you the power to hide things and even angels can't find them. He says, seal it. Lock the book. The person that came to unlock the book was Paul the apostle. That was why Paul said, it is given to me the mysteries and I have the power to make men see. The things that were locked for aeons, I have entered the rank where Daniel operated. I can unlock the mysteries. And this is why Paul became the custodian of the mysteries of Christ. Because those mysteries were revealed to Daniel. Remember, when Daniel was sojourning with God, he said, I saw, he saw the courts of heaven open. And he said, he saw one that looked like the ancient of days. His hair was white as wool. God was showing him the powers that the Christ will reveal. But when it was not the time, God now told Daniel to lock it. Nobody could unlock it until Paul showed up. And when Paul showed up, he opened the mysteries of Christ. And anybody can tap into Paul in order to access those mysteries. It was Paul that taught us what the church is. It was Paul that taught us what it meant to be a witness. It was Paul that taught us who we are in Christ. All of those mysteries were locked. Daniel locked it. Paul came to unlock it. And the reason is because Paul was a man that trembled at God. When Paul was going to Jerusalem, he said, I go to Jerusalem bound in the spirit. So even if it doesn't please him, so long as he pleases the master, Paul was willing to do it. He had entered mystery. And that mystery is not only to write scriptures. And that's why I'm sharing these things. That mystery made Paul invincible. Paul spoke and he said terrible things. He said, a day and a half I was in the deep. Paul fell into the ocean and they didn't find him until one and a half day. When they removed him, he was alive. So Paul was like an amphibian. He could, he could operate on earth and he could operate in the belly of the sea. You couldn't kill him. Because of what? He had mysteries. Those mysteries were so ingrained that he made him to become anything under any circumstance. He said, I can abound. I can abase. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Because of the realm of the fear of the Lord. The mysteries of God open. Hope you know that Psalm 25 verse 14, the Bible said, the fear of the Lord. The, it said the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. Not with them that pray. Not with them that fast. The secrets of God is with them that fear him. He will show them his covenants. That's why Paul said, we are the servants of Christ. Therefore, we are the stewards of the mysteries of God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 1, he became a custodian. And so, Paul was so powerful that Paul was bold enough to tell the church in Ephesus. He said, when I leave you, he said, wolves, ravenous wolves will come. You know what Paul was saying? That was the same prayer Jesus prayed for his disciples. He said, all that you have given me, I have kept. None has been lost except the son of perdition that the scripture might be fulfilled. The same power Jesus had to protect the church. That was the power Paul carried. And he said, so long as he was in Ephesus, nothing could happen to the church. He said, but the moment he departs, he said, wolves will come into their rank. That means Paul was a guardian. Because of the access to mysteries that he had, you couldn't penetrate the church when Paul was around. And that was not read in the book. He said, the message I preach, I was not taught of any man. He said, when he pleased the Father, who separated me from my mother's womb to reveal Christ in me, I confessed not with flesh and blood. I went to Arabia. All they taught us is human connection. That's why we are weak. The ways of Babylon. How to manipulate men and build relationship. That's all they taught us. They will tell you, make sure you call once in a week. And when you are visiting, take a gift. And then you see Christians operating in mundane wisdom. Wisdom that is built on selfishness and self-centeredness. When somebody needs you, he packages something. 
and he presents it as if he's honoring you. That's what they taught us. And that's how they taught us to manage relationship. But in the word of Paul, they built relationship in the spirit. He said, I went to Jerusalem by revelation. Galatians 2 verse 2. I went by revelation. After 14 years, that was when God told him, now meet Peter. It wasn't a manipulative relationship for acceptance, for visibility, or for validation. He went by revelation. Because their own relationship is born in the spirit. They had enough power, not just to be protected, but to guard the people. If Paul comes to our midst here, nothing can happen to us. The same way Jesus is in our midst, nothing will happen. Paul can come like that. Did you not read what he said? He said, concerning virgins, I have no commandment from the Lord. He said, but I'm found to be trustworthy. And so what he said became scriptures. How can the Holy Ghost not inspire you and you write something and it becomes scripture? Because it was functioning in the realm of the fear of the Lord. And so long as you operated in that realm, the secrets of God are with him. That's why I began by telling you, it's not every challenge you use faith. Some challenges, you need discernment. Some challenges, you need secrets so that you will be 10 steps ahead of the enemy. It's not every battle you fight, you will waste your arsenals. There are some battles that mysteries and secrets will cause you to avoid. But if you don't have these things, you will waste yourself. And he said, the labor of the foolish wearies every one of them because they know not how to enter the city. The labor of the foolish. And when you leave the realm of the fear of the Lord, then you come to the sixth realm. It's called the realm of the knowledge of the holy. That's where God commits to you the powers of eternal life. Because knowledge it's not for you to increase in fact. When your knowledge is fact, it says your mind will be puffed. Knowledge actually brings liberty. It says you shall know the truth. The truth shall make you free. And knowledge actually transform you. We all with open faces, beholding us in the glass, the image of the Lord, we are changed. So the knowledge of the holy turns you to become a visible expression of the invisible God. Because that's what God created. Let us make man in our own image and in our likeness. But you can never come to that level except as you migrate from the realm of mercy. Through the realm of love. Into the realm of grace. And then you come to the realm of righteousness. You come to the realm of the fear of the Lord. And then you come to the realm of the knowledge of the holy. These are the things that give the church her true power. And that's why when the devil attacks us, what he attacks are the things that prevent us from making progress in the spirit. When he says the path of the just is as a shining light that shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. It's not that today you didn't have money, tomorrow you have money, next tomorrow you buy a house, you now buy a car, and you say, I'm growing. That's mundane. No, it's not, that's not the path of the just. That's the part of a wise businessman. But when Christianity is watered down, we judge our value system by the standard that the world gives. If that is your own part of the just, that means that will take, we buy your whole life. <laughs> you move into depths and dimensions in God until you come to a point where when they see you, they see him. That's where Jesus operated. In the realm of the knowledge of the holy. He said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. That's my greatest asset. If you have seen me. And because he has become like the Father, everything the Father can do, he can also do. You will now discover that the things men pursue will become a byproduct. That's why testimonies are not necessarily cast. We say that to encourage people so that we can appreciate God's benevolence. But beyond that, testimonies 
are the level of access you have in the spirit. Because when you are sent in the spirit, the material world will respond. The material world was designed to respond to the spiritual world. I said that to let you know that God is known in his judgment. If you stop at the realm of grace, you don't know God. You will have to come to the realm of righteousness. That's why he said in 1 John 3 10, little children, let no man deceive you. 3 7. He said, Him that doeth righteousness is righteous. And in 1 John 3 10, he said, Him that is born of God sinneth not. It's not just I'm forgiving, it's that as he is, so am I, or I am in this world. You move from the realm of righteousness to the realm of the fear of the Lord. And then you come to the realm of the knowledge of the holy. You really have the mind of Christ. You think what he thinks. And you live as though Christ was the one living through you. Which is actually the reality. And in Galatians 2.20, Paul made us understand that he attained that realm. Say, the life I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God that died for me. God is known not just in his benevolence. God is also known in his judgments. I can assure you that more than 90% of the believers of this age, they don't know God in his judgments. That's why our world is lawless. Many pastors don't know God in his judgments. The reason is because the messages they are even preaching now are the messages they recycled from a century ago. It's what E.W. Kenyon taught, that Kenny Hagin taught. That's what all of them are teaching to date. People have not pressed deeper and say, Father, open virgin dimensions to us. And when we catch the revelation of Kenny Hagin, catch the revelation of E.W. Kenyon, and cripples begin to walk, blind eyes begin to see, we now build Babel. We migrate from Zion, we enter into Babel. We are supposed to start from those revelations. But God is a movement. He's a river that will never end. It's a river we keep exploring because there is a heritage of knowledge that is left for our generation. All of us read those books. But the body of Christ is going forward. And now we have known enough of the benevolence of God. It's time to know God in his judgment. When you read the writings of Paul, you will discover that the ratio of grace to works is about 65 is to 35. When you go to Revelation, the ratio of grace to work is about 20 to 80. Because as you migrate towards the end of time, the value system is not just what God did for you. It's not what you can do for God. Because while he's dealing with us individually, he's also dealing with us as a body. Now, having established this foundation, let me show you the 12 layers of the spirit realm. That's my message. Ah. <laughs> my brothers and sisters. You see, we can't teach the word of the Lord. We can't teach it. Because if you even begin to talk the heavy matters, you will lose your audience. They, they will not know where you are going to. Because all they are used to is give, it shall be given unto you. Good measures, press down, shake it together. And you see, Christ. <laughs> all our giving is bargain. When they need them to pray, isha basha, isha basha. somebody is in the hospital. The moment they discharge the person, they will wrap their altar and go and keep it till the next day problem comes. <laughs> you see somebody ah, 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 is looking for a wife the moment he catches the gaze of that lady the next thing is in Dubai snapping like this there's nothing wrong with those things I went for honeymoon to so but I'm trying to let you know there are deeper things. And you know, 
Sometimes they are hard to teach. Oh, they are hard. That's why we break, you know, the way people should sit in church is not just a large congregation. It's according to generations. When you check Israelites, when they moved, they either sat, they sat according to their tribes and in the tribe, they sat according to their generations. When church really becomes interested in establishment, we can't be 10,000 in one audience. Who will you talk to? There are those you can say strong things to. And there are those that you need to say little, little things to. Because we are in different generations in the spirit. That's why sometimes you hear us preach. Where we touch some strong meat. We will now come back and explain smaller matters. And people will hear you and say, ah, this man has lost it. You don't preach what you know. You preach based on your audience. If I meet young believers, I can't be telling them keep deep kingdom matters. They don't even know the benevolence of God. You start talking judgment. They will, they will leave you and go home. But people will just sit on the internet, cross their leg, and be marking where you are in your walk with God. The other one saw me, the other wrote on the other day and said, the kind of people this man is mingling with, he will soon fall into error. I laughed. Me, I know my calling. I'm not a pastor. I'm a revivalist. I'm sent to the body. The good, the bad, and the ugly. When I meet the good, I strengthen their faith. When I meet the bad, I convict them by the word. When I meet the ugly, I bring the judgment of God until they repent. It's church organization that people create different factions. I'm not a factionist person. I'm sent to the body. That's why Jesus saw Zacchaeus. He said, come down. Today I'm coming to your house. Tomorrow you see Jesus in the banquet with the Pharisees. Banquet. The worst set of people in the damn world were tax collectors and Pharisees. They looked at him. They said, he's a friend of publicans. This is a fake prophet. When the harlot came and poured perfume on his leg, they said, ah, if he's a prophet, he should have known that this is a harlot. Jesus said, those who are well don't need a doctor. It is those who are sick that need doctor. I know my calling. I'm a revivalist. I'm not a pastor. If I'm a pastor, I'll go and look for the people that preach my kind of message. I'm sent to the body. That's why we mingle with genuine people. We also mingle with fake people. We are the sort of the body. If we create faction, some people will be lost forever. And they will not just be lost. Their congregation will be lost. So if I enter the camp of the fake people, even if they refuse to repent, because not everybody Jesus met repented. Zacchaeus repented. Judas never repented. But even if they choose to, choose not to repent, at least some of their followers will hear us and they will know that what their papa is saying is fake. <laughs> That's why we mingle with everybody. And so if you think we'll lose our calling by mingling with people, you have not seen anything. Because this man talking here, I can even enter a heavenly shrine. The Christianity of self-preservation, you want to preserve your name and be a good person. Some of us don't have a name. We are called apostles. That's our work. And if you think that I don't know Jesus enough, that I meet a fake prophet or a fake believer and he will convert me, then I need to stop preaching and go back. That means I didn't graduate from the school of the spirit. I didn't graduate. If a man can still change me, my encounters are fake. But if my encounters are not fake and you think because of preserving my name, I will create factions, I'm not part of those people. I am sent to the body. I strengthen the genuine I convict the fake and we judge the diabolic because Jesus feasted with Zacchaeus he feasted with the Pharisees he carried prostitutes as his disciples and even the son of perdition followed him till he died
Some look at you. You preach a strong message today. They now hear another message. They say, Kai, this man is no longer preaching the message we know him for. Ah, I'm a traveler. I'm an itinerant preacher. I can go to a place today and I see strong believers and we talk deep matters. I will go to another place tomorrow and I will find only babes. I will give them what they can handle. You are online hearing all the messages. You don't know that I preach one in Jalingo, I preach the other one in Meduguri, and I preach the other one in Enugu. I'm not talking to the same people. That's why you hear Paul, you hear John. At one point, they say, if you sin, ask for forgiveness. At another point, he said, if you sin, Jesus will ask for forgiveness for you. At another point, he said, we don't sin. You now hear one person saying three different things. You say, this is contradiction. No. He's talking to different levels of maturity. And that's why the apostles are called wise master builders. I can go to a congregation and tell them, whatever you do, God has forgiven you. I will see a mother and say, God has forgiven and forgotten. Come to the Lord. That's what we do on crusade ground. But when we come to discipleship ground, we will tell you that in the world to come. But if you carry the world to come to a crusade ground, they will go home. So you that is on the internet, judging those who are accurate and those who are fake, why not go to the mission field for one year? I just came back from Janingo. My whole body is aching. We ministered fire and brimstone this morning in Janingo. And then we came back. Meanwhile, I flew six hours overnight from London to Abuja two days ago. The next day I went to Jalingo. Today I'm here. Tomorrow I'm going to Milan. Sometimes you stand up in the morning, your waist is like this. <laughs> you, you can't bend well. Meanwhile, we are young. This is when we should carry our yoke. He said, bear your yoke in your youth. <laughs> because very soon when you are 50, you can't do anything again. Then you consolidate. So the spiritual and spiritual realities are deep. 